Hey guys, today we have a yet another device to try out. This is called Car Smart Box, and it's a CarPlay interface that uh, that connects to your car. It uh, pretends to be an iPhone, and as soon as your car thinks it's an iPhone, this device will send uh, its image to the to the display, taking over the control uh, of your car's uh, interface. So this is the device. Over here we also have a USB-C cable to power it and connect it to the car. We have a, a USB to USB-C adapter and we have a micro SD card as well as some short documentation over here. And that's pretty much it. And the device, the device is very small. Let me just show you how small is it compared to an inhalator. AirPods or maybe iPhone 11. So this is how small it is, how thin it is. So looking at the device, uh, we have USB-C port over here to power it and connect it to the car. And we have micro SD card slot over here and a regular SIM card port over here for data transmission. We have two holes over here. I believe those are some status LEDs. One should be blue and the other red. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the input and output uh, interfaces over here. Inside there's an 8-core Qualcomm CPU. It has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of uh, built-in uh, flash memory. And there's also a GPS receiver over here, so your car does not need to be equipped with GPS if you want to use Google Maps. And there's a Bluetooth inside, of course. In fact, two Bluetooths, one for wireless communication with your phone for um, uh, wireless CarPlay or one uh, wireless Android Auto, and the other one to connect to some other devices like keyboards or um, uh, OBD2 dongles. And there's also Wi-Fi inside. Okay, so let's take it to uh, to a CarPlay enabled enabled card because that's the one requirement that we have over here, and let's check how this works. And in-car installation is very easy. All you need to do is just turn on the car, connect one end to the device, and the other one to your car's USB port. And as soon as the device turns on and it's uh, discovered by the car, your car will let uh, the device use the screen, the touch control, the, uh, the control knob, and a few other things and you will see the Android interface on the car's display. So let's give it a few seconds. We can already see that uh, my car uh, discovered some kind of iPhone and right now we can see the Android interface on this, uh, on this display. As soon as the device completely boots up, we can control it with touch or with the control knob like this. Okay, so let's check out what's possible over here. Head south, then turn right. This route avoids the road closure on the A1. You are
Okay, so let's talk pros and cons of this little device hidden over here. First thing of all, the installation is very easy. I think that we can all agree on that. Uh, you, just, you just need to plug it into your USB port and it works. It's very small, it fits easily in this compartment. We can even close it if we want to. Uh, if we, uh, It works with uh, touch controls as well as uh, control knobs. If you have, for example, Audi with MMI uh, MIP2 where you have only the control knob over here and the screen is not, um, is not a touch screen. Uh, what's else over here? There's a wireless CarPlay which works really well and I also tried wireless um, Android Auto with this Samsung S10. It connects wirelessly and it works for about 10 seconds and then uh, sadly it disconnects but I believe this is the fault of the phone. I messed around with it um, a bit. I made some changes to the firmware and I believe as soon as I go back to default settings over here it will work but I don't have time for this sadly today to check it out for sure. Uh, also, there's a GPS receiver in it, so if you have a car with CarPlay, but if your car is not equipped with GPS, you will still have GPS guidance over here from the GPS receiver in the unit itself. It works with uh, Bluetooth accessories like uh, keyboards and OBD2 dongles, and also you can listen to normal, normal radio. Uh, right now I'm switching to normal radio and now going back to the CarPlay mode and we can still hear the radio from the speaker so you are not limited to have your media playback from the device while you are using it. So for example you can use Google Maps from this and still listen to your favorite radio station from your traditional radio tuner. And of course you have a lot of pre-installed apps over here, the most popular ones. And if you want something else, of course there's Google Play Store. If something's listed over here, you can just install it on your uh, on your device, of course, if it's if it's supported. Right now I don't have internet connection, so I cannot uh, show you. Oh, I can show you that there's a lot of a lot of apps over here. I have two concerns about this device, two things that I've noticed. Okay, so first of all, you are limited to the micro SD card port as your media input source. Uh, I would really much, uh, really much like regular USB port over here to connect my thumb drive. It would be much more convenient for me, but I'm not sure if that's possible in a device that's uh, this slim. And the second thing uh, that I've noticed is how long you have to wait for the CarPlay interface to be available on the display. First of all, if you start your car in the morning, you have to wait for the uh, car's system to boot up. Then you need to wait for the Android box to boot up. Then you need to wait for the Bluetooth connection between the device and your phone. And then you need to wait for the CarPlay, uh, CarPlay application on the Android system to turn on. So there are four steps before you can see the uh, CarPlay interface on your display. Of course, they'll, this all happens automatically. In, it takes about a minute in total. So uh, when you uh, back up from your from your parking space and your space and you are at the end of your driveway, I believe the CarPlay interface interface will be here, already here available for you. So that's uh, just something that I think you should know. I've noticed it and I'm sharing it with you. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope that you like this short test and review. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you did. Also in the description below this video you will find a link to AliExpress, AliExpress if you want to buy one of those devices and a short technical specification for those who are interested in the more technical information about this little device. Okay, thank you for watching and see you soon.